Okay, good morning. Um, I hope everything is working right here. I've got two cameras going. First and foremost, um, let me look at my notes here. This is, I'm not good at multitasking, so uh, I'm going to try and keep up with what you guys are saying uh, as I play some examples here for you. But first and foremost, the point here is that this record is taking a good bit longer than I had hoped. And probably the reason for that is I'm trying to make a record that competes with million dollar film scores. Um, and I actually think that can be done, but of course I'm doing that on about a 40th of that budget. So something's got to give. And there is a, um, as I'm learning, there's a massive, massive amount of detail that goes into a project like this. Um, so, because this is going to take longer than I'd hoped, I want to give you a little bit more of a sneak peek than I have uh, anticipated. And so, I picked a piece called The Awakening, which is probably the most, uh, well, it's one of the most adventurous pieces on the album. Um, it's the newest thing I've written. Uh, a lot of the pieces on the album are, um, they're all part of my story. They go back years, some of them but I'm redoing them from scratch. And uh, this piece though, I started writing back in January. I had been listening to the new Star Wars score by John Williams, and um, honestly I was kind of disappointed because I don't think it stands up to his earlier work in a lot of ways. However, there's two themes on the record that I absolutely love, and one of them is at the end of the record, and it's called, uh, I forget what it's called, I think it's called Jedi Steps or something like that. It starts with um, a real mellow celeste sound, but there's a cello line, and it goes like this. Uh, if I got everything working here. Yeah, there we go, there's my cellos. Okay, so it starts out like this. And that theme stuck in my head. And so, as I was writing one day, um, I got to the piano, which is typically where I write. Let me find my piano. This My template uh, has about a thousand tracks in it, so it can be a little tough to, to find things. Um, so, uh, just kind of playing around that key, and I had that in my head. And um, so that's kind of what started this whole piece. So I'm going to just play you sections, uh, and I'll kind of delve into what, what's what. So the first thing um, after the intro is the, the this piano section, and I'll shut up. It goes like this. Okay, so that is kind of how the piece starts, um, or that's the first thing I wrote. And so after that, um, I just started thinking, you know, I want a piece on this album to really tip the hat to John Williams. And so starting to look for ideas, I was listening to a bunch of scores, and another score of his that I really love is the, uh, the Harry Potter stuff that he did. And um, one of them has, it, it, he, he uses uh, an instrument called the celeste a lot. And that is um, that's one of my favorite instruments. It's just got this magical, uh, magical thing. And so I wanted something that kind of had the, the, you know, that Harry Potter thing. You know, that, that you know, tinkly magic, you know, dragons and fairies and all that kind of nonsense. So the next section, after what you just heard, goes into this little... Um, I don't know what you call it, but it's got that, that kind of feel. So this is what happens next.
So, obviously it's going somewhere. So let me break this down a little bit for you. There's a couple things going on here. Um, first and foremost, of course, is the Celeste, which is this little, um, uh, yeah, this guy here. So by itself, you will hear the Celeste, and it's just this little, it, this all happened by accident, which is really cool. I mean, that's, that's pretty much right out of the Harry Potter universe. So that's that. But then I thought, okay, it needs some, it needs some pizzicato strings. So what I did there is um, a couple different uh, things making up this sound. Um, two different libraries um, called, in this case, Symphobia and Albion. Now, keep in mind, most of the orchestra stuff that you're hearing is going to be replaced by the real thing. So for now, uh, just placeholders. Um, so that's my pizzicato section, and so they are adding this to the equation. Real basic. So, still not done. Put them together, they sound great, but I wanted some more stuff. So just the other day, as I was expanding on this piece, I thought, you know what, this needs some woodwinds, some kind of playful stuff like that. So about halfway through, we bring these guys in. Little clarinet. So just little, little flourishes. Put them all together, and this is what you got. Forgot something. Um, I also thought halfway through this needs a little bit more movement, so added some violins. Solo these guys. Actually, those are violas. And then finally, um, something else. Oh, brass, brass, uh, horns. Add just a little bit of a swell right here, just at the end of this section, or going into it rather. Sometimes just two notes, that's all you need. So, okay, so that is that section. Um, next, it goes into what I call the soaring section, and this kind of came about from the John Williams thing. Um, go back to my piano. So, borrowing from his minor key thing, his melody goes... So I wanted something like that. So I kind of took it in a, in a different direction. It sounds pretty similar at first. Um, So that was the initial idea. So I kind of started sketching that out, and um, I'm just going to move along here a little bit more so you can get the idea. That became this. basically just kept that same idea, moved into a different key.
Okay, so let me solo a couple things for you. Uh, let me just let you hear just what the strings are doing there. So now, one of my favorite instruments is French horn, and I think in the right places, French horn can make such a dramatic statement. So right around there, I believe... Yeah, uh, here's what the French horns are doing. Nice little counter melody. Anyway, um, trying to keep this short. I want to try and keep this under 20 minutes or so if I can, so I'm moving fast. This next little section coming out of there is one of my favorite things that I accidentally ever have done. Uh, I don't know how this happened, but um, it did, and I'm so glad. It, I don't even know what to call this, but it, it's just a fun little happy accident. I don't know what that is, but I love it. Um, and what's cool uh, next is it just goes into a restatement of that theme that we just heard a few times, um, just on the piano. Okay, so that's the first uh, third, maybe, of this whole piece. Um, I'm a big fan of dynamics, of things going in, uh, well, loudness, softness, all that kind of thing, but also arrangement dynamics, going from what you just heard, soft and tender, to big, soaring, melodic sections. But what happens next, um, I... Man, I don't know if I want to play you this or not, but because you're being patient, and I want to thank you for allowing me the time to get this done right, I'm going to play you this, um, because there's more to come that you're not going to hear, so I don't want to ruin all the surprises. Anyway, you think this piece is done there, and then this happens. Okay, so lots going on there. Um, here we kind of venture into uh, maybe a little bit of Hans Zimmer territory, a little bit of Pirates of the Caribbean, um, a few other things like that. So in here, we start getting into things like um, big, big symphonic brass. And what key am I in? Uh, Sound like that's kind of cheating. That has everything in it all at the same time. I tend to only use that for sketching ideas, especially when I'm going to replace it with a real orchestra. Um, this also is a library called Symphobia, which is insane for this kind of stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so <laughs> that is that section. And then I, another thing I like doing a lot, which John Williams does a lot, is changing keys called modulation. And um, taking a theme in one area and then bumping it up to a different key, sometimes going down to a, a different key, which sounds like it's lifting, but it's, it's a fun trick that he does. So coming out of there into a next section. Now, a 
another thing in terms of dynamics, adding something new each time a phrase comes around. This time that we just heard, um, the percussion starts getting a lot bigger, um, and I add a couple things there. So let me solo up what's happening in that section. Lots going on. Uh, another thing that's crazy about this piece, if you, I don't know if you can see the screen, but up here, <laughs> we are changing keys and time signatures probably every two bars. Uh, we we'll go from uh, key of C to key of F to key of B to key of E minor, then A minor, then E minor, um, F minor. And time signatures, we go from 3-4 to 4-4 four, four, to 2-4 to 3-4, 4-4, 3-4, 4-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 4-4, 5-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 5-4, 3-4, 
So there you go. Um, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to give you any, any more of this piece because from there it just goes to 11 again uh, for the rest of the piece. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm two minutes over. Um, I, For technical reasons, I can't see what your replies are or anything. So I'm going to log off. I'll go on. And if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to quick try and edit this together. And I will post later on the this whole thing, but with full quality audio and video. So you can hear much better what it's supposed to sound like. And I will also play you the entire piece as it's supposed to sound from beginning to that point I just stopped at. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little peek into the awakening. Um, as always, I will keep you updated on the project. Um, I, again, I just can't thank you enough for allowing me to do this. It has been a dream come true, and I hope that this music um, inspires you and, and uh, moves you, and, and um, it's certainly very personal for me. So. There you go. Happy Saturday. Have an awesome weekend, and we'll see you later. Thank you.